All right, thanks for watching, and today I'll discuss a fun property of the real numbers, which is called the Archimedean property. And let me motivate this by a scenario. Suppose you're at the grocery store and your total comes to $100. Uh, but suppose you only have one dollar of bills, but as many as you want. Can you pay the bill? Yes, might take a long time, but you can. Now suppose your total is $1,000 but you only have one cent coins, but again, as many as you want. Can you still pay the total? Yes. And this is the, the um, intuition behind the Archimedean property, which is as follows. So if A and B are fixed positive real numbers, So think of, again, um, B as your total and A as your currency. Then if you, what this is saying is you can always go above B just by having enough of A. So in other words, then for some natural number N, we have that N A is greater than B. And again, what this is saying is, no matter how big your total is, and no matter how small your currency is, you can eventually go uh, pay that um, total bill. And again, if you want, there's a picture. Suppose again, this is zero, and this is your currency A, which is small, and suppose I give you a very big number here, B, then again, you can eventually get exceed that number B. So just by going in A steps. So this is 2A, this is 3A, etc., etc., and at some point you can hop like a bunny and get above it's almost like the, the fox and the hare problem, I think. So, or no, the turtle and the bunny problem. Um, <laughs> in other words, suppose a bee is a, uh, the bunny that just doesn't hop at all, then basically if, um, if you wait long enough with the turtle, it will eventually uh, exceed the bunny. In some sense, well, again, or to quote the quote in the book, given enough time, one can empty a large bathtub with a, a small spoon. And again, it's a nice property, very you know, unique to the real numbers, but let me show it to you because it's a nice consequence of the least upper bound property. Because, so proof, First of all, at least the way it's motivated, assume your total is bigger than the currency. B is bigger than A, because you see, if the total is smaller than your currency, let N be one. And if your total is exactly your currency, let N be two, and you can always exceed it. And in particular, suppose this is false. So we wanna do a contradiction proof. Suppose this is false, that is, there are some real numbers, A and B, positive, and uh, such that for all n, we can never go above B, so n A is always less than or equal to B. In other words, suppose you have the following scenario. So there is some total that's just impossible to attain. This is B, and no matter how you start, so in other words, there is some A such that even if you do it more or less infinitely many times, you can never get above your currency B above your total B. And in particular, what's interesting, what does that mean? 
it means that B is actually an upper bound for all those numbers. So, so in particular, this means that if you let S to just be the set of NA, where N is a natural number, which, by the way, it's not empty, A is in it, because it's smaller than B, then it's not empty, and moreover, it's bounded above by the number B. So in other words, S is just this whole thing, to all those things here, we call that S. Then, then S is not empty and bounded above by B. So bam, what can we use? We can use the least upper bound property. So by the LUB property, the soup of S exists. And let's call it M. M, which is the soup of S, exists. And what we want to do, we want to find some sort of a contradiction. Because what do we have? Again, we have our set S, whatever it is, and we have that soup, M. And because we're dealing really with multiples of A, let's consider the element M minus A. It's a very neat trick. So consider M minus A. Look, A is positive, so we know that M minus A is less than M. But remember what M was. M was a supremum. So here, I tell you, M minus A is not the best student. So we know there's some element here that's bigger than this. So in other words, by the definition of soup, soup, there is some S1 in S. S1, it's strictly greater than M minus A. And by the way, I want to emphasize, this is so important in the uh, business of soup. The soup business, okay? Um, if a number is smaller than the soup, then something happens. So always think of it as like a reaction, right? You have something smaller than the threshold, boom, something horrible must happen. So here in particular, we know there's S1, such that this is bigger than m minus a. But again, what is s? It's the set of all multiples of uh, a. But by definition of s, we know that s1, it's some multiple of a, so s1 is n naught times a for some uh, n naught in n. But then look back at this equation. We have S1, it's greater than M minus A. That means N naught A, it's greater than M minus A. And let's just play around with this a little bit. Then M is less than A plus N naught A. And so N is less than uh, one plus N naught A. But that's a problem because remember, we said M is the supremum of S. In other words, M is greater than any multiple of A. But now we found a multiple that's bigger than this. And that's essentially our contradiction. But 
But the point is, 1 plus n naught a, that's a multiple of a, is an s. So by definition of n, it's a supremum, so it's a, an upper bound. We have 1 plus n naught a is less than or equal to n. And therefore, what do we get? We get m is less than 1 plus m naught a, and that's less than or equal to m. So m is strictly less than m, and that's our contradiction. A contradiction with what? With not our statement, right? So in particular, the Archimedean property is true, and next time I will give you a cool consequence of that Archimedean property. So it's a cool chain of videos if you want.